Welcome to our Quarantine Baking Show. I'm your co-host, Kayla. And I'm your other co-host, Emma. Today I'll be showing you how to bake a mint bundt cake. And I'll be baking a chocolate raspberry cake. Let's get started! First, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and gather your ingredients. Mix your dry ingredients in a bowl. Hey, Emma, I wonder what the rate of which the height of the sugar is changing in relation to how the volume is changing. Do you know what it is? That's a great question. We can actually figure this out using calculus. Sugar initially is 17 centimeters with a radius of 3.25 centimeters. And we know that the rate of volume is changing at 9 to 3 centimeters cubed per second. We are trying to find the rate at which the height of sugar is decreasing in the funnel when the height is 5 centimeters. First, we need to use the equation for the volume of a cone, which is volume equals 1 third pi r squared times height. Notice how since there are two variables, height and radius, we can set up a proportion to substitute in for the radius so that we can rewrite the equation completely just in terms of h, or the height. To set up the proportion, we would write that the radius over height of the big cone equals the radius over height of the little cone, just shown right here. With simple algebra, we calculate that the radius equals approximately 0.191 times the height. We then substitute this for the radius to get that the volume equals 1 third times pi times h times 0.191 h squared. We can simplify this equation to that the volume equals 0.033 times the height cubed. Now that everything is in terms of the height, we can take the derivative to find the rate the height is changing using the power rule to get the change in volume over time equals 3 times 0 0.0383 times the height squared times the change in height, height over time. We can then plug in the rate of the volume of sugar, which is negative 3. Finally, we can rearrange the equation to solve for the change in height when the height is 5 centimeters. We find that when the height of the sugar in the funnel is 5 centimeters, the height is decreasing at a rate of negative 1.045 centimeters per second. Now, back to the baking show. Now that we're done with the dry ingredients, now let's do the wet ingredients. Yay, we're done with our batter. Now to put in our pans. You know, I really want a large surface area on my cake so I can optimize my decorating space. How are we gonna do that? Well, let me show you. Here are my two pans with radii 10 centimeters and 14 centimeters. To find the radius that would give the lowest possible surface area of the cake with the given volume of about 800 centimeters cubed, we can write the cylinder volume and surface area equations in terms of R. We then write h in terms of r using the volume equation, and then plug it into the surface area equation of the cylinder. After simplifying, we can derive it and find sa prime, and then find where this changes from negative to positive to find its minimum. The radius for the surface ends up being 5.03 centimeters, meaning I should use pan number one, which has a radius closer to this value. Well, I guess I'll use this one then. That's awesome. Lucky for me, I only need to use this pan. No calculus required. Well, where's the fun in that? Anyways, now that I know which pan to use, let's pour our batter in. Now, let's bake. I wonder who has more cake. How should we find out? Funny that you ask. In my calculus class, we learned about finding the volume of irregular objects with the shell and disk methods. 
To find the volume of my cake, we can split it into the cylinder base and dome top. Using pi r squared times height, we can find that the volume of the base is 1506.67 centimeters cubed. This is the curve of the dome top, of which we can find the equation for by plugging in different points into vertex form. From this, we can determine that y equals 0.26x squared plus 2.65. This must also be put into terms of x in order to find the volume. Using disk method, we know the equation dv equals pi r squared h. We can replace r with x and h with dy, and then x with the equation of this curve. We can then find volume by integrating both sides from y values 0 to 2.65. This equals 424.26 centimeters cubed, and added to 1506.67 is 1930.93 centimeters cubed of cake in total. To find the volume of the bunk cake, we first need to graph it. To do this, I measured how wide the bunk cake was and what the radius of the space in the bunk cake was, which is 7 centimeters and 2 centimeters respectively. Knowing this, we can find that the curve of the bunk cake is y equals the square root of 12.25 minus x minus 5.5 squared, and we can then find the volume using shell method. To do this, we set up the integral volume equals 2 pi times the integral from 2 to 9 of x times the square root of 12.25 minus x minus 5.5 squared dx. We can then plug this into our calculator to find that the volume of the bunk cake was approximately 664.965 centimeters cubed. Well, congrats on having more cake! I wonder when Caleb made this cake. Let's use Newton's law of cooling to find out. Our ovens were 350 degrees, so this is the original cake temperature. The room temp is 68, the first time after taking it out was 200, and the second 175. We can start with this equation, given by Newton's law of cooling, and plug in 68 for the surrounding temperature, then divide and multiply it to get the same variables on each side. We then integrate this, getting natural log of the absolute value of t minus 68 equals kt plus c. To get rid of the natural log, we can make each side the exponent of e, in simplifying, we finally get that t equals c2e to the kt plus 68. We can then plug in the first point that we checked. This simplifies out to get a k value of 0 0.03. If we plug this into our equation and use our second point, we can simplify the same way to get that t equals negative 25.3. This means that the cake was 350 degrees 25.3 minutes ago, and it was taken out of the oven at 819. Now let's see the cakes. With the power of calculus, we were able to make these delicious cakes. Tune in next episode for when we use pie to make pie. Thanks for watching. <laughs>